the last video, we created the flow macro that allowed our player to shoot towards the point where the player is clicked on the screen. In this video, we want to work on the projectile prefab and spice it up a little bit. We're going to add a muzzle flash as well as a sound effect that is controlled by a flow macro. So let's go ahead and get started. So I still have my projectile here in my hierarchy. And the first thing I want to do is change the sphere collider to act as a trigger. So I'm going to check is trigger. The next thing I'm going to do is add an audio source. This is going to play the sound effect when the projectile gets created. Now I've added all of my downloaded assets into a downloads folder. And you can see here that the first folder, Action SFX Vocals, that's what I want. And I provided a link to this asset in the video description below. The sound effect I'm going to use is this Gunfire 2. I'm going to drag and drop that into the audio clip. And then I'm going to turn off Play on Awake. Now the reason I'm going to do that is my flow macro is going to alter the pitch of this sound effect. And I want to alter that pitch before the audio source starts playing. Now I'm sure that's not the only way to do it. It's just the way that I chose to do it. We also want to make sure that looping is turned off so the sound effect just plays once. Next, we want to add a light component, and this is going to create the muzzle flash. I'm going to open that up, and I'm going to turn its range down from 10 to just 5, which is more than enough for a muzzle flash. I'm also going to alter its color, give it a little bit reddish orange, maybe make it slightly more realistic. With the audio source and the light added, I'm going to add a flow machine. And then in my macros folder, I'm going to right click, create, Bolt, Flow Macro, and I'm going to call this new macro Projectile. I'm going to go back to my Projectile and drag and drop that into the Flow Machine. Now that I made several changes to the Prefab, I want to make sure that I push the Apply button up in the Prefab Options. With that done, we can start to build up our Flow Macro. I'm going to double click to go into Full Screen, and I'm going to add a Start Event. So the first thing we're going to do is get the sound effect playing. And like I said, I want to vary the pitch of the sound. By varying the pitch of the sound, each bullet sounds a little bit different. It's a little less monotonous and you get a little bit more distance with one single sound effect. So I'm going to drag out the flow and I'm going to search for random range. And I want to make sure that I get the first option here, which takes float inputs and gives a float output. And I'm going to set the minimum to 1.4 and the maximum to 1.8. And this is going to be the values for the pitch of that sound effect. So I'm going to drag out the flow and I'm going to search for audio source pitch and we want to set the pitch. We're going to set it to the value that comes out of this random range. After we've set the pitch, we want to play that audio source. So search for audio source play. These units are enough to get our sound effect playing. The next thing we want to do is simulate a muzzle flash. And the way we're going to do that is when this projectile is instantiated, the light is on. And a short time period after that, we want to turn that light source off, given the illusion of a flash. Now to do that, we need to wait a certain amount of time. And in order to use a wait unit, I need to be in a coroutine. So I'm going to click on my start event and then check the option for coroutine. I'm going to drag the flow out from the audio source and I'm going to search for wait, wait for seconds. I'm going to give it a delay of 0.05, which for most computers is just going to be a couple frames and that's all I want. I'm going to drag the flow out from there and I'm going to search for light intensity. And we're going to set the light intensity. And the default options here are what we want. The light component is on this object that the flow machine's on, so self will work. And we want to turn the light off so the intensity is going to go to zero. Now the next thing we want to do is have this projectile destroy itself. And the reason we want to do that is because we don't want hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of bullets in our scene that aren't being used. That can have a dramatic impact on the performance of your game. Now destroying the game object is not necessarily the most sophisticated way to do it. We could use a system called object pooling, but I'm gonna save that for another video. So we're just gonna destroy this object. And we're gonna do that in two ways. We're gonna do that if the object hits something, then we're gonna destroy it. But we're also gonna destroy the object if it doesn't hit anything. Depending on how you've created your scene, how you've set up your scene, it may be possible to shoot a projectile that doesn't run into anything. In that case, we just wanna wait a small amount of time and destroy the game object. So I'm gonna right click, add a unit, and I'm gonna search for on trigger enter. And I'm gonna drag the flow out from there. And I'm gonna search for a wait, wait for seconds. In this case, if the on trigger event has fired, then we don't need to wait very long. So I'm going to have this delay be fairly short, a tenth of a second. And then I'm going to drag out the flow and I'm going to search for game object destroy. And I'm going to choose the second option here. And then we need to tell it what to destroy. And we want to destroy the object that this flow macro is on. So I'm going to right click, add unit, and search for self and drag that into the object that's going to get destroyed. Now, in order to use this wait, we also need to be running as a coroutine. So I'm going to click on my on trigger event and choose coroutine. Now again, just in case this projectile doesn't collide with another object, we want to destroy it after a certain period of time. So I'm going to cut and paste these three units, drag them over at the end of my start event, and connect up the flow. 
but I wanna change the delay. I'm gonna change this to three seconds, which is more than enough time for the bullet to fly off the screen and interact with anything that it might interact with. We also wanna make sure that it's off the screen so the player's not seeing the bullet disappear. Let's go back into play mode and see how this works. So you can see that the bullet that was originally in the screen has destroyed itself. If I create more bullets, they hit things and they're destroyed. If I shoot it across the scene, they stay around much longer until they hit something. So now that we've got our muzzle flash and our sound effect occurring on our bullet, I wanna add one more little piece of juice, one more little piece of detail that's gonna make our projectile a little bit better. So here in my hierarchy with my projectile prefab, I'm gonna right click on the empty parent and I'm gonna come down to effects and trail. And what we're gonna do is add a trail to our bullet so that when it moves across the screen, there's a little bit more visualization. There's kind of a, a path that it's leaving behind it. In the inspector, we have a trail renderer component now. And I'm just gonna make a few changes to make this look more or less like I want. So the time down here, I'm gonna change this to 0.1. I'm gonna move the width down quite a bit. And I'm gonna add a couple extra keys so that it flares up a little bit at the beginning. And then at the end, it's gonna trail off and be much smaller. We also wanna change the color. So I'm gonna click on the color, and this is a color gradient. So what I'm gonna do is insert a couple keys down here in the color, and I'm also gonna turn the alpha way down, so this is mostly transparent, and the same at the end key. So now our trail is mostly transparent, but I wanna change the color a little bit. This first key, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a red color, like so, and the second key, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a gray, like so. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna go back to my empty parent and make sure I push apply in the prefab options. And let's see what that looks like. And now you can see that the trail's being rendered behind the bullet, making it much easier to see, and frankly, just a lot more fun. So there you go, we've created a projectile, we've added a sound effect, a muzzle flash, and we've added a trail to it. In our next video, we're gonna create a flow macro that will control our enemy health. That way, when a projectile hits an enemy, their health will decrease. If their health gets to zero, the enemy will die and play a death animation. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you'll join me for my next video.